Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Greetings, friends, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Rachel. And I'm Catherine. And how are you doing today, Rachel? I'm great. How are you? Fabulous. I'm loving this topic. Can't mm-hmm. wait. Yeah. Jump right into it. Let's do it. So this one was inspired by um, one of our viewers way, way, way back mm-hmm. when Matt and I first started. She suggested, check out these painted monasteries in Romania. Uh-huh. I was like, I don't, what is this? Painted monasteries? I've never heard of such a thing. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Um, I checked it out and I thought, oh, that looks neat. But we didn't uh-huh. get around to it. But then recently, my sister-in-law went to Romania and she actually got to see them. So wow. I thought it was the perfect opportunity. So they must have impressed her as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And these beautiful monasteries can be found in uh, Bukovina, which is in northeast Romania in a a region called Moldavia. The story is back in the 1400s, there was a prince called Stefan the Great, and he fought uh, battles against the Turks. And he built a monastery as a thanks to God for every battle that he won. What makes these uh, monasteries and and churches unique is that um, instead of just having murals or frescoes on the inside, Uh they actually extend to the outside as well. And the frescoes are are biblical murals, Mm -hmm. basically. They feature famous Bible stories. And the reason that they were painted was so that illiterate folks could understand the biblical stories without mm-hmm. having to read. Right, kind of like almost a comic strip yeah. illustrating the Bible. Yeah. One famous painting there is called The Last Judgment, and it shows Adam and Eve and all the prophets and separated from the wicked by this dove that represents the Holy Spirit. And once, one thing that's interesting about it is that uh, a lot of the uh, peasants have painted themselves into the actual pictures. So there's a, a political and religious symbolism going on in both uh, the paintings that you see. Keep in mind that um, these, these monasteries and churches are part of the Eastern Orthodox. Orthodox tradition. Mm-hmm. So iconography in general is, is a big part of decorations in that tradition. Yes, yeah, very prominent. One big difference among these all these different monasteries is that, well, for one, they are all very colorful. Mm-hmm. And that's something kind of remarkable about them. But they all have sort of a predominating color. Um, color. Uh-huh. So for example, the Voronet Monastery is very famous for its predominantly blue color. Yes, yes. Some of the other ones are red or green or yellow. Yeah, they all that have kind the, of are the the standout color. What is interesting is uh, we were wondering why they were so brilliant in color, and what we found out is that they were made with a combination of semi-precious stones and rare clays, heated and mixed with minerals, and no organic material was used at all in it. So, unlike the frescoes that you see in other parts of Europe, where they used egg white to kind of be a binder, they didn't use any of that. It was all inorganic materials, and so that's why the colors are still so vivid today. It's incredibly beautiful. Yes, it is. And one one little tidbit, the the blue of the uh, the Voronet mm-hmm. blue is actually comes from lapis lazuli, which wow. is a which is a stone, a stone, a semi precious stone, very vivid. So blue. that's why it's so so blue. Yeah. But there are about um, 48 of these monasteries and churches in total, and they're so culturally unique. They're sort of a snapshot of this particular time and period mm-hmm. in in Moldavia that. Um, seven of them were listed on UNESCO's World Heritage List in 1993. One thing that happened back in that period was that the Turks did not allow the uh, bells to be rung, church bells. And so the nuns of that period, they had to beat a wooden bar, which is called a tuaka. And interestingly, they still do it today. If you were to visit, you would see nuns walking around and, and beating on this uh, bar instead of ringing a bell to call people in. <laughs> Fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one other little fact about Bukovina um, in general that kind of relates to painting, but it's slightly different. Bukovina is also famous for its Easter eggs. They they have these beautiful handcrafted, hand-painted mm-hmm. Easter eggs that you can buy. Very beautiful and very colorful. Yeah. The nuns that live at the monastery at Varnet, they offer painting workshops. So, oh, yeah. How yeah. about that? And I'm sure after you've walked through, you're probably inspired. And so this is one way that you can extend your, your time there and, and really get a feel of what it's like to be there. That's cool. And in general, Bukovina is supposed to be beautiful mm-hmm. um, just for its pastoral beauty and, you know, the view you get of the Carpathian Mountains. Yeah, absolutely wonderful. So that's basically Bukovina in a nutshell. It looks like a really pretty place with a lot of beautiful stuff that you can see. But if you'd like to learn more about Romania, you can always head to our website, HowStuffWorks.com, to um, check out our content on that topic. Uh, Or you can visit our blog. And also you can uh, find us on Facebook and Twitter. So if you'd like to leave us a comment there, we'll have the actual addresses at the end of the podcast. And we'll see you next time on The Coolest Stuff on the Planet. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And let us know what you think. Email travelpodcast at HowStuffWorks.com. 
Don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.